everybody needs an advocate. Because I'm not there 24-7. Families that have hemophilia mature faster. I've been feeling a lot of anxiety lately. I'm so tired of being strong. To understand how far we've come helps you appreciate where we are now. No is just no for this person. Somebody's going to say yes sooner or later. And it helps you understand that there are more steps to be taken in the future. You're the first person I've met with a bleeding disorder. Let's fight the disease and not the people who have it. I uh, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes back in the early, early 70s. 33 years ago, I was the first diabetic on the insulin pump to deliver a baby. The first pump was this big, and, and I wore it 24-7. I, I love doctors. I, I do. I, I, I love the doctors that I've worked with. And, and the funny thing is, is that when something goes wrong, you have to have a primary care physician because they're going to put all the pieces together. Having a chronic disease doesn't bar you from something that possibly could be worse or just could be an inconvenience. I've always had joint issues and they've linked it to my diabetes and I've kind of you know blown it off but there was an occurrence where my shoulder really got bad and I pushed it off because I was like ah yeah it's the arthritis it's the arthritis so by the time I did get it looked at by my orthopedist he said, you know your cartilage is gone and I went oh well, how do I get it back? <laughs> and he says, you need a joint replacement. Maybe if I had not waited a year and said, oh, this is normal pain for me. I'm used to this pain. So nothing's normal. Pain should not be normal. So listen to your body. My story um, comes about where I just, uh, you get married, you start having children. You don't suspect it. We have no family history. So I have a daughter and then I have a son. And my oldest son goes undiagnosed for two years until my youngest is born. I took it upon myself to learn as much as I could just by reading, staying up late every night, reading about it. And I just decided after a brief a stint of depression, like most, all right, all right, you get through that and you just decide that you're going to become the best advocate for your children. And the only way you can do that is just by learning. I realized that he had um, gotten a head injury and I had taken him to the ER to get infused and it wasn't healing. And I said, please, can you test him for inhibitors because I don't believe this factor is working. It's not resolving. And they did so and within hours I had the results. And the thing is with children, I think you do have to allow them because you're trying to teach them to make good decisions. All you can do is really inform them and uh, allow them to make the choice. Obviously, sometimes it results in a bleed and hopefully they learn from that. And that's all you can hope for because I can't make decisions for them for the rest of my life. During one of the operations, he was traumatized because he woke up during the surgery and he felt it. That was just a difficult point, but I think we chose to um, deal with it in just, uh, just by talking to him and making him realize that we have to put that in the past and move forward. I went to Kenya to help set up a lab and clinic for people with hemophilia. And the first day we were there, we actually saw a boy in the hospital just bleeding out and they didn't know what to do. Um, and luckily the doctors we were with recognized he had hemophilia right away. You know, he had really swollen joints. He was 14 years old um, and they gave him factor eight that they had brought with them. And he ended up living, which was really amazing and left the hospital in the two weeks while we were there, which was spectacular. But it also just changed my whole perspective on on life and uh, what hemophilia really uh, can be. Baseball was something I was like, obsessed with. Um, and finally, going into the HTC, they're like, you either treat before the game or you don't play. And that was a big lesson for me. It was like, if, if, if this is something that I love and I want to do, I, gotta, I have to overcome this challenge. I've always told Patrick through this whole thing that I don't want it to be about climbing the mountain. You know, It's about finding something that you're truly passionate about and you truly care about um, and just persisting and, and, and to keep striving towards, you know, achieving that goal. You know, that persistence to like, if you keep working towards it and moving towards it and like taking those small steps, you know, I guess mountaineering is like a very good metaphor for that. It's like, you take small steps, you know, over a really long time and you'll finally reach that goal. The community was probably the biggest thing to change my perspective on my, my condition, um, to not resent it anymore and, and embrace it and, um, not let it define me. I want to thank Linda, Liz, and Chris for participating. Thank you. <laughs> to watch video from any of our previous Powering Through sessions, visit poweringthrough.org. Or to learn more about National Cornerstone Healthcare Services, NCHS, visit nchswecare.com.